This is a mediocre model overview in Fusion 360. Today we're going to be looking at this thing. It's something I did about a year ago over a three-day weekend. The intent was to turn it into some kind of tutorial, but I eventually realized it would take about 20 years at my pace. So overview video it is. I didn't care that much about the design of this thing, since that wasn't the point. But even still, I did go back later to change out the rear chassis to fit better with the character of the bike. So I put the total time at around 27 hours. So this was the design process, if you want to call it that. All I knew was that I wanted to make an electric motorcycle styled around the race bikes of the 80s and early 90s. Partly because I like that style, but mostly because it would be faster to model than the stuff that's out there now. Now I know very little about motorcycles, so to start, I photobashed a whole bunch of bikes together. About half of them were electric. Then I used that as a reference for scale to make a line drawing in Illustrator. And I used this drawing as a canvas in Fusion. The end result matched pretty closely, and I just made a few changes to parts that didn't make sense when I saw them in 3D. So I'm just going to go through the timeline and call out some of the more interesting things. Keep in mind that this whole model is just hacked together to make pixels on a screen, and making something real is a topic for another day. When working with vehicles, I tend to start with the wheels because it grounds everything and gives a scale reference for the rest of the model. The tread's kind of interesting because it's staggered, so I mirrored half of the tire then just rotated the whole body by 360 divided by twice the number of treads, then combined it all back together. The hub's just a revolve, an extrusion, and a bunch of fillets, and the front wheel's just a copy with a non-proportional scale. This is the old rear chassis, it's just extruded from one direction, then cut from another. Like most of the details on this model, the brakes are just a bunch of extrusions. Just make a couple blocks, cut some away, then fill up the hell out of it. Here I'm managing multiple bodies when creating a feature. And sometimes, just to go faster, I'll create features as new bodies, then use the combined tool so that I can quickly join stuff together without hunting through the list of bodies. This is a totally fake gearbox-like thing. I was trying to do the chain as quickly as possible, so the sprockets don't actually match up. But here's a trick for doing something a little better. And again, this is for a hack model, not something real. Try defining the chain first, then spacing the teeth on the sprockets based on the chain. This way, they'll always match up and you didn't have to do any math then all of the bodies that make up the chain get combined into one to make a lighter file. These are just a bunch of fillets you can hardly see. Even if an edge is intended to be sharp, I'll still add a fillet on a model like this just so it catches a highlight. The shock is pretty straightforward, but what I find a little funny here is that I didn't do a revolve. I just pieced it together with extrusions. I don't actually remember why. This just shows there are multiple ways to do any one thing. The coil was kind of interesting because Fusion doesn't have end taper features on their coil tool. So I modeled a small end section, then just lofted the transition. The front brakes are also pretty straightforward, just a bunch of extrusions, then fill up the thing like crazy. Same story with the handles. The brake lever looks like a complicated lofted part, but it's actually just a single extrusion that's filled it from the front, and then shelled from the back. Lots of arrayed patterns on this thing, like the details on this grip. These are just some internal details that you'll barely be able to see when the model's done. Some electric bikes have the motor mounted high with the battery below, so that's what I did here. It just happens to look like a cheese wheel or something. But it's supposed to get covered, so I didn't care. The frame was built using the pipe tool. Here's a quick dirty trick. Let's say you want to make a joint that looks like it's been welded, then ground down to a smooth blend. An easy way to do that is to round the ends before combining. This gives a profile that's easy to fill it. Just to show how hacky this model is, the frame isn't even attached to anything, it's just floating in space. This is where things start to get interesting. So this is the upper fairing, or whatever you call it. The base geometry was quickly thrown together with cheese blinds. It's not a very clean construction, but you can see how this was defined. Ring around the detail. So we have one, two, three, and four as our driving rings, then everything else is just filling the gaps and this edge loop was given a creased edge that will be filleted later. Now out of sculpt mode, I used an extruded surface to trim and add dimension to the part, then thickened it and added some details. So this lower fairing was done with a completely different approach. Yes, it started with T-splines in sculpt mode, but it's more of an overbuild surface modeling approach. This creates a very clean geometry in comparison to the one above. It's similar to having made this with a surface loft, which would have also worked here. T-splines was just faster. 
So we take this overbuilt surface and trim away the edges to define the shape. There's a little protruding aerodynamic go faster detail on the side. This is made by cutting in a simple slot, then making a couple surface lofts, trim away the edges, then fill the holes with a patch surface, using curvature continuity to define the blend. This is done before all the big improvements to the loft and patch tools. But if I were to do it again, I could construct this with a single patch surface with guide curves, or finish the ends off with the loft tool using guide drill continuity. It really opens up a lot more options. Alright, this might be the dirtiest part of the whole model. That's because of this nasty start point. If you look closely, there are little bumps in the surface around this point. Geometry like this might happen when you have multiple driving rings, all competing to pull this one area of the surface. Now this could be cleaned up a bit by adding a few more loops to help distribute the intersection, but then it'd become more difficult to control. Just like the rest of this model, you have to balance the ease of control and overall quality. For a quick model like this, I chose the easy path. If this were going to be something meant for production, this would just be a starting point. It'd be a reference for a proper Class A surfacing job that wouldn't use T-splines at all. So on a model like this, I'm willing to let little imperfections like this slide. The front fender is pretty simple. It's the basic T-spline shape that could have easily been a lofted surface, and it's trimmed from the sides. Thicken it, add a couple fillets, and that's it. I don't have a good shot of the rear fender, but it exists too. The reflectors on the inside of the lights are kind of interesting because it's quite organic. This is just a few T-spline cylinders with bridge geometry between them, and I tweaked it a bit until it looked okay. I wasn't too worried about the edges of the surface, I just made it go slightly beyond the walls of the light to hide any weirdness. The rear lights are basically shield extrusions with some ribs on the inside. The seat is just a copy of the top surface that's trimmed from the top view and then thickened. More fake internal details. The gauges are really basic. Just made the front face carbon fiber to make it look like it was done on purpose. Here's a radiator you can barely see, just a couple of extrusions. Some little details you also can't see, just wires and screws and stuff. The color scheme was built into the model. It's a split body using a single sketch from the side view. Here's the updated rear part of the frame, just some pipes. I had to adjust a few of the parts to get things to fit after the change. And that's it. The mediocre cycle is done.